forward the argument that because we are now in Maya, we are thinking that we are different from God. But Krishna is saying, you and I and all these are eternally individuals. He is very clearly differentiating between himself and the living entities and treating all, including himself, as individuals. Does this mean that Krishna is also covered by Maya or illusion? If the Mayavadi philosophers are right that the differentiation of individuality is due simply to our illusion, then Krishna would also be in illusion, because he's making a differentiation between himself and other individuals. If Krishna is in illusion, then what is the use of hearing his teachings in Bhagavad Gita? Our value proposition in the esoteric teaching is that we have taken knowledge from the perfect person, Krishna. So if Krishna is in illusion, then he cannot be accepted as the perfect person, and the knowledge delivered by him is imperfect. But Krishna is not illusion. We are in illusion. Krishna cannot be in illusion. The clouds can cover our eyes, but they can never cover the sun, because the sun is far, far above the clouds. Similarly, Maya can illusion us, but she can never illusion Krishna. It takes a sober mind and sharp intelligence to understand this. In the Vedas, in the Kata Upanishad, as well as in the Svetashvatara Upanishad, it is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the maintainer of innumerable living entities. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko buhunam yo vididhati kaman tang atmastam ye nupashanti dhiras tesham shanti shasvati netaresham. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the maintainer of innumerable living entities in terms of their different situations according to individual work and reaction to work. That Supreme Personality of Godhead is also, by his plenary portions, alive in the heart of every living entity. Only saintly persons who can see, within and without, that same Supreme Lord can actually attain to eternal and perfect peace. Kata Upanishad 2.2.13 This verse states that there is Eka, the one Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Bahu, the many living entities. The Bahu, we living entities, are also Nitya and Chaitana, eternal and conscious. That means that Krishna is Nitya and Chaitana, and we are also Nitya and Chaitana. Therefore, as far as the living symptoms of an eternity are concerned, both the living entities and God, or Krishna, are similar. Still, they are different in quantity. The difference is that eko bahunam vididhati kaman, that one, that chief living entity, although he's eternal and the living force just as we are, he is the chief. He maintains all the others. That is the version from the Upanishads. Nityo nityanam, he's the supreme eternal amongst all the other eternal individuals. Chaitanas chaitananam, he's the supreme conscious living force among all other conscious living forces. Eko bahunam yovididhati kaman. That one singular supreme person, Eka, he is providing and maintaining bahunam, all other living entities. Tan atmas tam. He is also in everyone's heart. Ishwara sarvabhutanam hridesher juna tishtati. Brahmayam sarvabhutani yantrarudhani mayaya. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. Bhagavad Gita, 1861. So the Upanishads say, Tam atmastam ye nupashanti dhiraha. Anyone who can perceive his presence is very highly learned and gentle. Dhiraha. Dhira means one who is undisturbed, sober. Adhira means those who are disturbed. Those who are in material consciousness are always disturbed. But those who are on the spiritual platform, in the transcendental position or spiritual consciousness, are dhira. The Vaishnava poet Kalidas 
has described that dhira means one who is not disturbed even in the presence of provocation. A real spiritual master, a master teacher, has to be dhira. Otherwise, he cannot become a successful preacher. A preacher has to meet so many fallen souls. So if he also becomes disturbed by dealing with them, then he cannot preach. Therefore, the master teacher is dhira. Tam atmas tam ye anupashyanti dhira. Without being dhira, you cannot perceive the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead within your heart. God is there within everyone's heart in his Paramatma feature. But you have to become dhira without any disturbance. Then you can understand, here is Krishna within my heart. Let me love him. Premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena shanta sadaiva hridayeshu vilokayanti yam shama sundarama chintya guna swarupam govinda mari purusham tamaham bhajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Shama Sundar, Krishna himself with innumerable inconceivable spiritual attributes whom the pure devotees see in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. Brahma Samhita 538 This state of dhira is possible when we develop love for Krishna. When we are engaged in pure devotional service, pure love, we become dhira, or sober. Otherwise it is not possible. Otherwise we shall be disturbed. Premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena. And how can we see God? Not with these defective material eyes. There must be some ointment, some medicine to cure our spiritual blindness. That is called prema, spiritual love. Just like a mother sees her child as very beautiful because she has love for the child, Others are seeing the same child as ordinary, but the mother sees the child as extraordinarily beautiful, out of love. Similarly, when we have developed our love for Krishna, we can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not only within our heart, but everywhere. Then there is no question of impersonal misunderstanding. Actually, this love of God develops through the tongue, as we've described several times, the tongue is the key to understanding God. So if we always vibrate God's name with our tongue, and we always taste pure vegetarian food which is offered to God with our tongue, uh, then by our tongue we can actually control all the other senses. And this is the secret, and this is why we preach and teach using our tongue, again, to speak the glories of God to all the world through this podcast. Uh, you would be surprised, but if you follow this method, it actually works. The secret to controlling the all the senses is through the tongue. So if you use your tongue to vibrate Krishna's name, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, and taste only food sanctified by offering it to Krishna, then you very quickly will become purified and develop this love of Krishna. Krishna will come into your heart and awaken you in spiritual love, and in that way you will discover your perfect spiritual body. enjoyed this edition of Your Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of Transcendental Music and Mantras.